While on the job, the wheel of love turned in favor of Richard Ferdinand and Melissa Chang. That's the beginning of their journey. I met Richard on November 25th. It was a Monday. I was at work at the trial club. Uh, I'm the director of guest services. Melissa was at trial doing a promotion uh, for JPS. Um, I walked by and I saw her um, there and of course she was, she was striking. I was on the outside waiting for Shaku. So I find a way to, to go speak to her. This person walks past me into the dining area and then they come back out. I end up going up to her and ask her you know, um, if she needed any help and she said she was looking for an environmental manager. And I took my phone, called her, um, and then went on my rounds again. And then Shaku arrived. And when she got there, we were talking for a little bit. And then he passed again and came back out. I thought it would be a good opportunity to then go and introduce myself. I was like, that's a cute guy. I was like, how come he's walking back and forth so often? The expo was kind of going slow. And he suggested that since I was there, I should stay longer for afternoon tea. So I told her she should stick around until then. I stayed for afternoon tea and then I was at afternoon tea and they said, oh, you should come back for the manager's cocktail and, and talk to the members. You'll meet more people, we'll introduce you. After the cocktail party, I think we had dinner um, after. Up to all day Monday, it was just professional. One of our members at Harmony Hill was having a, a Tyrus Riley concert the Wednesday night. So I extended an invitation to her again. Then I was like, okay, I'm coming back. And I, was, I mean, I think that week I was just like, all right, I need to talk to the owners anyway. There was a moment in the Tyrus Riley show uh, where, you know, she was there dancing. I was like, well, you know, I'm gonna go dance with her. We started dancing to the songs and we were there and then Richard was kind of doing his thing. And then we took it to Pier 1. At Pier 1 is when I was with one of my friends and I said to her, I said, you know, you know, I like Melissa, you know. His friend said to me, oh, you know, he told me he thinks you're cute. And I'm like, okay. Just recently I found out that um, the, my friend actually went and told her that same night that I had said that I'd like her. I kept inviting her every day to something and I love to go to the beach. So Saturday morning I said, you know, hey, you know, you want to go to the beach? And she's like, sure. And uh, she was pretty spontaneous, uh, you know, you know, with all my invitations, you know. So I kind of got her, okay you know, I'm getting somewhere. We were having a conversation in the car about relationships and told me he liked me and he liked hanging out with me and what did I think of him and I said, well, I like you too, I think you're a cool guy and the way I am, I'm not rushing into anything, just go with the flow. Most people say that, you know, I'm one of those bachelors that you know, date a lot with a lot of different girls. I was warned about, um, well, they didn't call his name, but I was warned about, you know, be careful when you go at trial because the guys up there are just, you know, just looking for girls to have a good time. My reaction to that, of course, being the type of person I am as well, you know what, I'm single, I'm a grown woman, I can't become my own mind. It doesn't matter to me what they're interested in, what matters is what I'm interested in. So I didn't really pay attention to what anybody was saying. She was at the right place for me. I tend to have dated a lot of younger girls, you know, and, uh, but I think Melissa was just the right age, the right time, um, so it, it felt, you know, the right thing. We were talking, and so while we were talking, like over the past few weeks, he kept on bringing up me moving in. I said to him, I'm not going to give up where I live and my independence to just be with somebody if I'm not married to them. So we both agreed, yeah, we, you know, that we would probably 
could ma marry each other. And I said, well, why, why not? Let's just get married. I was like, okay. So yeah, I mean, I would still want to marry you in a year and I want to marry you now. And I want you to live with me. So why don't we get married? I said, okay, yeah, I love you. You love me. Okay, why don't we get married? I was completely, I think I was silent for about what felt like maybe two or three minutes. We started planning. First, first it started off, you know, and guys, don't be fooled, you know. Oh, let's just do it in a courthouse, you know. Uh, you know, it's like I was like, I was like, wow, this is cool, you know. Do it in a courthouse, you know. And I'd gotten her a ring um, for her birthday in February, so you know, she she moved it from her right hand to her left hand. So right away, I'm thinking, wow, I don't have to buy an engagement ring. I guess plans changed. <laughs> After we agreed we were going to get married, you know. Second day, I'm hearing her talking about, well, you know, I like this ring set that. Um, and you know, I want it to be your birthstone, and I, I, and all, all of a sudden, I'm thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> what did I, what did I get into? And then I said, we have to tell my parents. He said, why? I said, no, we have to tell my parents. You have to talk to my parents. We can't just get married like that. You need to talk to my parents. Now I didn't want to go tell her parents I didn't have a ring. You know, so I kind of really tried to, I'm like, well, let's put it off, you know, and she kept, I need to tell my parents. I didn't want to uh, approach the parents to get their blessing without having an idea of getting the ring. One of my friends, Natalia in Miami, she was coming, she always comes and visits us, and she was coming the following week, and she was kept telling me, do you want me to bring you anything? So I got on my WhatsApp and I said, we're in bed and she's next to me and, and my back is to it. And I said, um, yeah, can you like look for a ring for me? I need a ring, you know, an engagement ring. I just, I sent her the photos of the colors and, and, and the birdstone. And so luckily she was out shopping and she went into this um, jewelry store and she was like taking photos and sending videos of different rings until she found one that she thinks that I would like and she and and believe it or not the name of the jewelry store was Richard's jewelry store <laughs> you know so that was like all the signs was like coming together you know and then she was like she's such a good friend she's like Richard I'll buy the ring and when I get back when I get to Jamaica you pay me and then we went to her parents uh, to break the news. Um, again, uh, they were having their Sunday coffee and Dr. Chan was reading the newspapers and we called the mother and uh, um, her brother and cousin kept teasing me. It's like, are you nervous? Are you nervous? You know, and I'm like, I'm cool, I'm cool. I got this, I got this. Um, you know, I, I had another friend who we had rehearsed, scripted, what we were going to say, I, I think I, I de my delivery was very close to um, to, to what we, you know, and, and and they gave us our blessing. Just for you, we're reliving our wedding day on the Love Zone. Let's get to the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> our colors for the wedding were inspired by our birthstones. So his birthstone is aquamarine, which is kind of an ocean blue, teal variation. It, it goes from those shades, from ocean blue to teal. And my birthstone is amethyst, which is deep purple. My gown is a strapless organza tool gown. It's a high low hemline. And right after he proposed, I kind of went online and browsed and clicked on gowns she and was pictures. browsing for like months before. No, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. It was light and comfortable. That was very important that I didn't have to wear a lot of um, crinoline underneath. Stacy was in control of my hairstyle and my Stacey makeup. Stacy Spence is the best. <laughs> she styled everything. So she came up with the whole idea of how to do my hair. They didn't have any colors to wear or anything, they just got boutonnieres, that was it. We just look cool. Yeah. That was their objective. I would Big. say it was better than what I dreamed. Melissa Antoinette Chang, I promise to love and care for you 
and I will try in every way to be worthy of your love. I will always be truthful, respectful, understanding, supportive and be a touch away. I promise to listen, but most of all, I promise to be a true and loyal friend to you. I love you. <laughs> His vows touched all the right nerves for me. I mean, I was moved by his vows. I got the and I got the trust in there, you know. Yeah. Um, truth, <laughs> respect, understanding, Standing, support, support and, and touch. touch. Yeah. yeah. He incorporating the stuff that we talked about together, yeah. and then um, seeing he'd always be a loyal friend. It was. For me, it was, it was everything he needed to say. It was perfect. Richard, you are my butterfly effect, a culmination of chance meetings, arrangements and events that pulled us together, a once in a lifetime experience like a silver lining on a cloudy day. You came into my life like a cool afternoon breeze, first with the ease of Saturday mornings. You became the part of me I never knew I missed. I promise to take it one day at a time and cherish every moment with you. To love you completely. Never has my soul, body and mind been in such balance. I look forward to our journey and new beginnings in faith, hope and love. You are family and always with, will be. I vow to be true to our true self, our one heart, one love and these promises I made to you.